Hi there, my name is Angela and I am a lawyer. When I came to Karis, I loved God, I was pursuing his things, but I didn't fully understand who he was. Karis has helped me understand my identity and my authority. Now I can step out in boldness and with power as a child of God. My name is Marvin. I'm a graphics designer. When I joined Karis Bible College, I was a drug addict. Four months down the road, having sat under the word, I was totally set free from all the addictions and the desires, and I am now entirely delivered. Be a part of those who testify. Enroll to Caris Bible College in this 2024 intake. Your life will be transformed, built into a leader ready to change the world. Apply online at karisuganda.net or visit us at Park Royal Mall, 6th floor, along Buganda Road, Kampala. For more inquiries, please call us on 0200 330 000. Join Caris Bible College. Join Caris Bible College. Come on to Caris. Caris Bible College, transforming lives, training leaders, and changing the world. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. I grew up with the knowledge of God and the presence of God, but I knew I needed to know Him better. I've always thought of God as a harsh father. His teachings just really brought me back to, you know, knowing who God is and recognizing it. And now, here's Andrew. But some people have a hardened heart towards God. And because of it, the seed, the Word of God, just never penetrates them. There's some of you watching this program right now. But who knows, you're probably getting ready to go to work, you're doing something else. You're hearing these words, but it never penetrates past your understanding. It goes in one ear and out the other ear. And you have this incorruptible seed that could literally transform your life. And it just is laying on the surface. It never gets down on the inside of you. And Satan just comes and steals away the Word. It says over in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, this this is the same parable that is reported here in Mark chapter 4. And in Matthew 13, 19, when it discusses this first type of uh, soil that the seed just laid on the ground, it says these are those who understood not and the uh, Satan came and stole away the word from them. Kakati ye matayo, bwabanyo nyola etakali ne edia soke bwa, edia soka, okufune nsigo, edia li kakanyavu. Adio gira kobwati, agamanti bulia ulida, echigambo chobwa kabaka, nata chitegera, omubioyo aja, na kwa kula, echisigidwa mumutima gwe. So the very first step in getting the word of God down on the inside of you is that you've got to understand it. And you know, I may be prejudiced or biased in this, but God called me to be a teacher of His Word. And there's a lot of differences between just preaching and teaching. This is an oversimplification, but a preacher basically proclaims a teacher explains. And this is what God has called me to do. There's a lot of people that have heard that by his stripes were healed. And they believe that healing is for us. But they don't understand how it works. 
THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT KNOW THAT THIRD JOHN CHAPTER 1, VERSE 2 SAYS, BELOVED, I WISH ABOVE ALL THINGS THAT YOU WOULD PROSPER AND BE IN HEALTH EVEN AS YOUR SOUL PROSPERS. CHEMANYI WALIA BALALABANJI KUMWE MUMANYI DE DALA YOKANA ECHIOKU SATU CHE GAMBA OKUFAKULU ORUNYIRI OROKU BININTI OMUAGALU NISABA OBERE ENGA BURUNJI MBIGAMBO BYO NA ERO OBERE ENGA NOBULA MUNGO MUOYOGU NAGO BEGUBERA OBURUNJI. AND SO THEY BELIEVE THAT GOD WANTS TO PROSPER THEM SPIRIT, SOUL AND BODY. Abantu banji bakirizanti katonda ya gale bagaga wazibwe muoyo mubiri ne meme. Financially. Mubiye nsimbi. But they don't understand it. Nidi bate gira. Ngiri jechili nzakula bikamu. And if you don't understand, even though you've heard that God wants you to be well. Nebu otate gira. Nti yade wawuli rakonti katonda ya gale obede mulamu. God wants to prosper you. Dorusi katonda ya gale ogaga wazibwe. God wants to bless you. Nti katonda ya gale if you've heard that, but if you don't understand it, Satan comes immediately and steals away the word. So I believe that this teaching ministry that I have, and of course there's many other people in the body of Christ that have it. That the teacher is just really important. Otherwise, the word never even gets below the surface. Kutaka kunguru kwa chigudi. If you don't understand, it goes in one ear and out the other. Buotate gira chigambo. Chii ingida mkutuku muu na chifurumira mkulala. And you bring forth no fruit. No doka, ota zala chivala ya denechi muu. Then the second type of soil in this parable. Kakati echikachio chetaka echo kubidi. Murugero lunu. Is in Mark chapter 4 verses 16 and 17. This is. The interpretation. And Jesus said, These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Beba linga abasigiwa awali enjazi. Abo beba ulire chigambo amangu wa gobachi kiliza nesanyu. Ne, nebataba na mizi mubo na ene ba marechi sera chitono. Au, uwaba awo okulabe naku oboku higa njiziwa. Uruwe chigambo amangu wa gobesi tara. You know when the Lord really spoke these truths to me through this parable. This is... Umanyika tondo bayogi la nange amazima gana agari murugero lunu. This is where I was, was in this second type of ground. I believe that this is actually a progression. Everybody starts with no understanding and the word just doesn't penetrate. Fena fena tutandikira wali ngo wulire chigambo nota chitegera ne chikuita ko So then you get understanding the word gets down but then it's you don't have enough depth of earth to get the roots down Kakali no lyoko tuka motendiro go kubiri olusi kakati chigambo no chitegera echibulidwa niyo lokubanga emirandi la jomitono ne chibanga te chikole de The third type is where the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things are like weeds Kakati omutendiro ogwo kusatu gwe guno gobogera ko mu mako esula ya kunonyira 19 anti awe mitawana jensi no bulimba bwo bugaga no kwegomba kwe bintu ebirala ne biyingira ne bizise ekigambo that come and choke the nourishment that should go towards the proper seed, and then there is finally the type of ground that produces fruit. But I think it's a progression, and nobody just starts fruitful 100%. You have to go through these things. 
And I was in the second type of ground when the Lord really gave me revelation of this. And I was still in the Baptist church. That's what I was raised in. But when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, started believing and speaking in tongues and miracles and started teaching the word of God and talking about the authority that we had and countering this concept that whatever will be will be that God just does things and we have no control when I started teaching what the word of God says man they came against me big time I mean that's what it says that afflictions and persecutions come to steal away the word Satan isn't afraid of us. He's afraid of the word of God. He knows that the power is not us. Without God, we can do nothing. But when his word is sown in our heart and it begins to germinate and produce Man, he has been beaten by the word of God. Jesus went to hell and, and whooped up on the devil. And came out with the keys of death and of hell dangling on his side and he is absolute Lord and he destroyed Satan. Satan knows the power of God's words. So it's not you that he's against. He's against the word of God. Trying to keep it from taking root on the inside of you. And so so that's the reason that afflictions and persecutions come. See, when I first got started, I didn't understand that. I took it personally. When people criticize me, I thought, well, God, what's wrong? I'm trying to help people. I'm teaching what the word says people are mad at me and upset and I've now come to realize it's not me that they hate it they hate what I stand for they they hate the things that I'm saying because it's convicting them and it's saying that the way that they're living is wrong and they don't want to repent and so rather than than come up to the level of the word they just try and pull me down through discrediting me and coming against me and you know I've given this example many times. But it's, it's really impacted my life. And it's the best example 
on this that I've got. But right when I was in the midst of all of this persecution from the Baptist church and I was still in there and they were just giving me a hard time uh, I went to a friend's meeting in and he called me out of a group of about 200 or 300 people. And he said, I see you like a runner on one of these oval tracks. And you're running a race and you're leading the pack. You're winning the race. But the people in the grandstands are yelling at you. Telling you you're doing it all wrong. He says, I see you getting off of the track. And going up into the grandstands and arguing with the spectators, trying to convince them that you're doing it right. And he said, even if you win the race, I mean, even if you win the argument, you're going to lose the race. Forget the spectators. Stay on track. And boy, that was a word from God. And that's what this second type of person who received the word. They received it with glad. They were excited about it. But they were being criticized, persecuted. And it offended them and they tried to justify themselves. They quit giving attention to the word. And started focusing on the criticism. It was coming their way and it didn't bear any fruit. Satan will win if he can get you off the track trying to justify yourself. You know, I've got thousands of blogs written about me. What a terrible person I am. I've had some, a lot of things. And I've actually had my staff come to me one time. And they showed me some of these blogs. And said, we can do some things to limit this. And to counter this stuff and to stop these things. And I said, no, don't do it. And then about, I don't know, a couple of months later, they came to me and they had some really critical things and they showed me about four or five of these things. And they said, we've got to stop this. And I told them, I said, forget it. I already told you that. I don't want one second or one cent of my money going towards me being in the grandstands and defending myself. Let people criticize me, say what they will. I'm going to keep preaching the word. Because even 
if I was to win the argument. And somehow or another change these people's opinion of me. They've won. Satan has won. Because I'm no longer preaching the gospel. Well, I'm defending myself. See, that's not what you do. All of this comes to steal away the word. It's been sown in our heart. And you know, it says that the reason this happened was because they didn't have any depth of earth. You know, when I was in the sixth grade, I remember our sixth grade teacher. Took these two terrariums that were about, I don't know, a foot or two high. And they were big. They were identical sizes. And he put about an inch of dirt, maybe two inches of dirt in one. And the other one he put, I don't know, maybe six to a foot of dirt. Six inches to a foot. And they were identical, and then they planted tomato seeds in both of them. They put them on the desk right in front of me. They had the exact same temperature. The exact same sun. We watered them. We fertilized. Everything was identical. Except the amount of dirt. And did you know which one sprouted first? The one that had just an inch or two of dirt. Actually sprouted first. Because it didn't have anywhere else to put the growth. It didn't have the depth to grow, and so it sprouted first. And it grew to like a foot tall before the other one had even broken the ground. But because it didn't have the root system to, to provide the nourishment, it turned white and that thing shriveled up. And died. The other one just continued to grow. And we actually had to put a stake in there and it took and it produced tomatoes. And uh, it was quite a lesson. That see a lot of the growth, I'd say probably two thirds of the growth. When a seed is planted is below the surface. And yet everybody wants what happens above the surface. Like in ministry, people want to see people's lives change. And they want to see all of these visible results. But if you don't take the seed of God's word and plant it in your heart and get rooted in this, you won't be able to sustain the growth when afflictions and persecutions come. So this is what happened because this seed didn't have the root system. 
Ndiyo lukubanga nensi geno, lukubanga tiyaina mirandi la jari jinyele de wanseri. To sustain it. Na jivelenga sobo lo juwa nilira. When persecution came, uh, it didn't produce any fruit. Tewali chivala chazari. And this is what happens to a lot of people. Binobwe bite bebeda kubantu wa basinga. They get excited about the word. Bacha mokabu chamo sinebabuka uruwe chigambo chivafunye. And they just want to take it and run with it. Nibagamba chiange ncheza ni atanduko kuduka ni chigambo. But you need to prepare. You need to get the word rooted on the inside of you. Na yoi na na uwe okutuwa le dimu. Tocha mkabuchama suwabula kwa te chigambo chino uchisige uziba mutima go. We tell our Bible college students all of the time. Tuga mbaba izi bafaba baibo kole jibuli chisera. And that preparation time is never wasted time. Iranga tuba nyonye tuba gama nti obude buoma la mkwete kateka. And I tell you, there's been people that have come here and they were just so zealous for the Lord. That they resented being in school for a year or two. But I heard Billy Graham say this a long time ago. That if he knew he had exactly three and a half years to preach before the Lord came back. He would spend three years shut up with the Lord. Getting rooted in truth. And six months minister. And he would accomplish more in six months than he would in three and a half years. Without that depth and without that root and that maturity. Most people don't feel that way. But that's what this is teaching is. That you need to let the word of God be rooted in your heart. And see, this is what I'm talking about is when you're talking about hearing God's voice, you need to take the truths of God's word. And you need to sow those truths in your heart. And if you will do that, it just automatically brings forth fruit. You know, the next parable that is given in this Mark, the fourth chapter, it is Kakati, olugero uluwadako, uluwa yogurako wano mwichitabo cha mako isule yokuna. Even uses that word in the Greek, it says, automatos. Ida wadu wana ichi gambo cholu yonani, baibuli chibaji funulamu, nga wachita otomatos. Automatically, the seed automatically produces. Echida ganti, echi gambo, insigenu, ebalida wo, ebibala, mbagida wo. Man, there's so much. This book will go into further explanation on this. Akata boka no kena wandi kakeva ita, Nchuka chuka italimu kulafu wana. Kajja genda buziba musomoli no. Than what I'm able to do here on my television program. No kusinga obude. Wenizo kumala nonga mbiogera kwa no ku radio program weno. I have proof. I am convinced beyond reasonable doubt that God loves me. And because he loves me and he also loves you, there's absolutely nothing he won't do for you. You don't have to arm twist God. He loves you immensely, more than you love yourself. And he will fulfill his promises to you. So I just want to encourage you, sign up for Caris Bible College. If you're struggling to read your Bible, to do ministry, to, to excel in life, to just be happy in life, Caris is the place for you. There are so many programs, hybrid, full-time, correspondence. It just works for you. Man, this is just the best, best Bible college, and I promise you, your life will not be the same again. God bless you so much, and see you at Caris. Wow, what can I say about Caris? It's been an amazing journey. Before I came to Caris, I was a drug addict. Straight out of campus, I was just from rehab. I was broke. My families, my relationships were broken. But when I got to know who God was, and when I got to know how much God loved me, it really changed my life. And that is something I got to know at Caris. So I would like to encourage you today, enroll right now. Enroll today, and let me tell you, God is going to bless you abundantly. 
Wewe bale kuuliza program ya fe ya Gospel Truth ne Andrew Womack. Nzikiriza nti oweredwa omukisa. Obango lino obujulizi, obango lino okwebuza konna. Sina chindi nga weta ago muntu yenna okusaba nawe ku nsonga yonna. Tukubira ku simu eno wa manga 0200370000. Ngambie 0 bili Zero zero satu satu zero 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 zero. Oba hatu chali de kumakaga fe agasangwa ku Park Royal Mall omairo kwa mukaga ku Buganda Road. Ekizimbe ekili okulinana watoto church oba senana supermarket. Owere dwanyo omukisa.